when someone is uh, diagnosed with a kidney stone the immediate thing that uh, happens to patient themselves or uh, you know the friends and neighbors is random advice is given on uh, dietary consumptions you know what to take what not to take uh, i would like to kind of um, crack a little bit of uh, you know myths surrounding the stone formation one is relating to the uh, consumption of uh, milk uh, over the past so many years you know i have had patients where uh, you know once they are diagnosed with stone uh, completely uh, go away from uh, milk products including all forms of dairy so uh, that is that safe is that uh, is that going to reduce your chances of stone formation uh, strictly speaking no avoiding milk or calcium in any form can only be detrimental to the system if you deprive your intestine of uh, calcium by avoiding dairy products altogether your intestine starts becoming more hungry for oxalate which in turn could increase the incidence of stone formation second um, you know entity what we commonly hear about is um, uh, you know uh, taking plantain pith or as we call it as uh, varathand uh, plantain pith is is a diuretic it isn't uh, harmful it just increases the production of urine uh, but then procuring and then you know making this um, uh, varathand syrups are much more um, uh, you know tedious and uh, painstaking procedures then consuming water so anything that increases your diuresis which essentially means that passing more urine is good enough for uh, reducing the incidence of stone formation myths surrounding you know consumption of tomatoes whether tomatoes can be had as whole or should be remove the seeds of tomato and have it as uh, just a basic uh, constituent uh, there is no um, you know a hard and fast rule about uh, usage of uh, tomatoes so uh, using to- tomatoes in moderate quantities is recommended for simple reason that tomatoes also contain uh, something called lycopene and uh, lycopene is a natural uh, anti cancer agent which is available to humans in the form of uh, tomatoes